Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed the pectoralis major in some detail. We discussed its origin, insertion, innervation, blood supply, and actions. In this video, we're going to look at a couple of the deeper muscles, muscles that we may have to remove the pectoralis major to see. And those are the pectoralis minor and serratus anterior muscles. Now, I say we may have to remove pectoralis major because the serratus anterior is partly visible even with the pectoralis major present. So here's our pectoralis major muscle. These muscles in gray down here, these are serratus anterior muscles. So some of them we will be able to see even with this muscle present. However, if we want to see the underlying pectoralis minor, pectoralis major must be removed. So we're going to start by looking at the pectoralis minor muscle right here. I'll preface this muscle by saying that it strongly assists the function of the pectoralis major, particularly when we're talking about pectoral flies that you do in the gym with dumbbells or the bench press. So when you do those motions, yes, you're heavily utilizing the pectoralis major, but the pectoralis minor is also going to play an important role in that function. And we'll talk about that when we look at, it, look at its action. So here's our pectoralis minor muscle. It's a triangular muscle that's going to originate down here. Its, its origin is actually going to be its inferior attachment. And what we see is that it's going to originate on ribs three to five, so three, four, and five, and their associated costal cartilages. The fibers are going to ascend vertically and attach at the superior attachment up here, or the insertion, to the coracoid process of the scapula. So the insertion up here is superior attachment, origins the inferior attachment down here. The pectoralis minor muscle is going to be innervated by the medial pectoral nerve, and its action is going to be twofold. One, it's going to assist in scapular protraction. So with scapular protraction, that actually means that when you're looking at the backside, the two scapula are actually going to move away from the midline. Okay, so here we're obviously looking at the front. And you have to imagine this. I don't actually have a picture up right now. But on the back side, there would be a scapula right behind here. If the scapula were to be protracted, it would actually move in this direction. Okay, the opposite would be retraction, which means it would actually move closer to the midline. Sometimes you may see scapular protraction written as scapular abduction, but I prefer to use protraction since the shoulder also abducts and adducts. And so the pectoralis minor muscle is actually going to pull the scapula laterally, so it's going to protract it, although the serratus anterior is much stronger in that motion. What the pectoralis minor is really good at doing is stabilizing the scapula against the thoracic wall. And this stabilization is really important uh, in a bench press type of movement when you're performing a lateral flexion of the shoulder joint. So when you're laterally flexing during the upstroke of the bench press or the upstroke of a pectoral fly with either machine or dumbbells, it's important to stabilize the scapula. And the reason that stabilizing the scapula against the thoracic wall is so important is because if you're doing the upstroke of a bench press or a, a pectoral fly, whether it's with dumbbells or the machine, if the scapula isn't held firmly against the thoracic wall, it'll be just free to kind of glide around and it's going to it would increase the risk of injury basically to a bunch of muscles and ligaments in that area. So what the pectoralis minor is going to do is with the help of serratus anterior, it's going to protract the scapula, it's going to move it laterally and then it's going to hold it tightly against the thoracic wall. And that's going to facilitate that movement that we see during a bench press. It's going to facilitate lateral flexion, which was mainly done through the pectoralis major muscle. Okay. Next, let's take a look at serratus anterior. So serratus anterior is this series of serrated looking muscles. Serrated meaning it looks like the edges of a steak knife. So it had these serrations in it, which is where it gets its name. Now the serratus anterior 
is going to have its origins on the upper nine ribs. And each one of these segments is going to move around the backside and insert on the anterior surface of the medial border of the scapula. And so when these muscles contract, they pull the insertion toward the origin. So the insertion's on the backside here on the medial border of the scapula. So when these muscles contract, they kind of pull around toward the ribs, and you can imagine that's going to pull the scapula laterally, or it's going to protract the scapula. Now in terms of scapular protraction, serratus anterior is a lot stronger than pectoralis minor, but they both contribute. But serratus anterior is the major scapular protractor. In fact, because the motion of a bench press, lateral flexion or just flexion in general, is so important in the sport of boxing when you throw a punch, the serratus anterior is often referred to as the boxer's muscle, since in order to throw a punch in front of you, the serratus anterior, along with the pectoralis minor, have to protract that scapula in order to move it laterally to put the shoulder joint in position so that the humerus can come far enough in front of the body. Hopefully that makes sense. I also have another video where I dissect that in a lot more detail, and I'll try to remember to put the link to that in the description of this video. And then the serratus anterior's innervation is going to be through the long thoracic nerve. Okay, Let's take a look at some other views of these muscles. So here is our pectoralis minor muscle. Again, notice that it's this triangular muscle which is going to originate on ribs 3, 4, and 5 and associated costal cartilages. And then those fibers are going to run and converge up here on the insertion, the coracoid process of the scapula. And we can see a little bit of the serratus anterior right here, but we can get a better look at that on this slide. So here's a lateral view, the right lateral view of the thoracic cage. Here we have ribs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Remember that the serratus anterior originates on the upper 9 ribs, not ribs 10 through 12. And each one of these the segments of the serratus anterior is going to run around the thoracic cage and it's going to insert on the anterior border, or surface I should say, of the medial border of the scapula. And so you can see here that whenever the serratus anterior contracts, the scapula is going to be pulled laterally, sort of around uh, the backside of the body. And if you look right here, I'll move this out of the way, this little hole right here, this is the glenoid cavity or the glenoid fossa. This is where the humerus is going to articulate and form the glenohumeral or shoulder joint. And so if the scapula is all the way back here, if we haven't protracted and moved the scapula out here, then you're not going to be able to get your humerus that far in front of your body because the humerus is still confined to being in this joint in the glenoid fossa. However, if we protract the scapula, when we're moving our arm in front of our body, such as in a lateral flexion or flexion of the shoulder, then the glenoid fossa is moved farther toward the front of the body, and then that makes us have a larger range of motion for shoulder flexion or lateral flexion. Whereas if the glenoid fossa was all the way back here and we didn't protract the scapula, we're not going to be able to get that humerus as far in front of the body. And like I said a few minutes ago, because a boxer throwing a punch has to get their arm pretty far in front of their body when they're throwing it, you have to have that scapular protraction, and so for that reason the serratus anterior is referred to as the boxer's muscle. And one more thing, this nerve right here, this is going to be the long thoracic nerve. This is actually a nerve that arises from the brachial plexus, and notice that it pretty much goes over all of the serratus anterior muscles right here, all the segments. And of course it's going to have branches that are going to innervate the different parts of each segment of the serratus anterior. Hopefully this video made sense and you learned a lot about the pectoralis minor muscles and serratus anterior. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the four major rotator cuff muscles. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.